In this video, we bring you nine inside turn variations for West Coast Swing. What's up everyone? Happy New Year. This is Brian B. And Miss Megan. From West Coast Swing Online. I'm really excited to kick the new year off with this video. Uh, here's what to expect. We're going to cover nine inside turn variations. So what we're going to do is we're going to show all of them to music real quick. Then we're going to go ahead and break down the basic footwork for the inside turn. The footwork is going to pretty much remain the same all the way through. And then we will go through each variation, the things you need to worry about as the leader and the follower. And after each variation, we'll also recap it to music. Sound good? All right, let's get started. All right, gang, for the basic inside turn, this is the one you guys, sometimes it's called an inside roll. This is probably the one you learned in beginner class, right? Basic stuff. So I told you we'd cover the footwork real quick. Let me cover leader's footwork. So this is based off of uh, a left side pass. All of these are gonna be based off of a left side pass. So as the leader, I have a couple options. I can either step straight back down the slot and peel out on the second step, or I can kind of curve out on the first step so I'm out of the slot by the second. That's my walk, walk. On three and four, I triple three and four to get myself back in the slot. And then we have an anchor step on the other side. If I did it this way, it's a left turning side pass on my left side. So I have to curl out of the slot for one, two, three and four, five and six. And I'm gonna use that footwork for all of these inside turns. It's a six beat basic. So followers footwork. All right, so followers, we're gonna be starting with our right foot. We're gonna have two walks forward. So we have forward, forward. I'll talk about the prep on those in a second. Now we're going to do, I say three half turns. The last one's a little over half. Okay. So you're going to turn, 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 and then anchor step. So let's do that again. Nice and slow. We have walk, walk. Now we're going to turn, 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 and triple step. Now I said I'd talk about the prep in the beginning. A lot of people, when they do the prep, they take their whole body. You don't want to do that. It's just a very small uh, presence over the side, okay? So when you walk forward, you just want to make sure your whole right side is over your right foot. And then when you walk forward with your left, same thing. Cool. All right. So as the leader, it's my job to communicate the prep, right? And so when we go through the easy version, this is the one we probably already know, but as we go through the other eight, the prep is going to happen from different hands and from closed positions. So there's a lot of different things as the leader that I need to um, master and a lot of things that the follower needs to be aware of from her end. So basic one, um, we don't need both preps, right? We actually only need the second prep, right? So Megan's forward on the left foot. So as the leader, I don't need to prep both of these turns. Officially, I just need to prep the second one before I fire off the turn. Cool beans? So hand is cutting inside over Megan's blue hair and then back down to its position. We look at it from the other side. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. So from a high level perspective, I don't need to make both preps. That being said, I often will prep both times. Why would I do that? If I don't need the first one, Megan needs the second prep to be prepared for the turn. But sometimes maybe the connection's not right or whatever's going on, I might offer the first one up as a clue because that becomes kind of standard. So just so you're aware, it's not necessary. Um, I would say that between us, when we're dancing well together, you won't see that first prep often, but we're very well matched in our connections. But I will oftentimes prep that both times when I'm dancing with different people. Okay, that is the first one, the basic inside turn. Let's take a peek at that to music. Music 
All right, so the second version, I'm going to take my left hand. I'm going to go to the far side of Miss Megan, right? So we're going to go leaders left to followers right. And this one looks like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. If I look at it from the other side, oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So adjustments that I need to make. The basic uh, prep is the same, right? One, Two, the work is done. I don't have to do anything and crank with this hand because I've already prepped her. She's gonna turn, I'm gonna follow this around. The only adjustment I need to make is because I'm gonna be close, I need to step in underneath. I like to go to closed position. We can end this in closed position, right? I don't have to. I could just take this up and around and leave myself down here if I want. So you got two different options, right? If I decide to keep my distance, I don't need to step in close. If I decide to go to closed position, I need to step in. So that's really two and two A, so you get a bonus one. Anything from the followers perspective when we dance uh, leaders left to followers right? Um, really just followers for left. all of them, make sure that you are staying connected back when you need to or rotationally which you, when you need to, which is a little step up from what Got we're it. talking about. Yeah, so about. I find people get frustrated with this handhold because we get really good at connecting with this one, right? And then when we go to this hand, we're less good at connecting with this. Me as the leader, it's the same hand for me, but as the follower, I find out that that gets a little tricky. Cool? So that's number two. Let's take a look at that to music. All right, inside turn variation for West Coast Swing number three. And this time we're going to my right hand to Megan's left. It looks like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. Again, we can let that go and slide down. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. This is fairly standard. I think this is one that we learn early on because it's working off the follower's kind of more comfortable hand. So the only thing I need to think about, footwork's the same. One, two, I've done my prep, right? three and on count four, I just need to manage and make sure I step close enough. I like to put this hand out as a target and then we can slide down. If we do that one more time from this side, one, two, three, and four, I like to catch the back and then we slide down. Now Miss Megan's gonna talk about pow, pow, that hand. Yes, so when you're sliding down, for a follower, we always wanna make sure that we get connected back well. So when we slide down, we're going to make sure that we connect back into our core area of our own body so that we connect in the hand. Cool, so that's inside turn variation number three. Let's take a look at that to the music. All right, inside turn variation number four, we're going off the leader's right hand to the follower's left. So we've got a little pattern going over here. This one looks like this, oh, one, two, three and four, five and six. If we do it again, oh, one, two, three and four, five and six. So I did two different versions, again, like a, uh, a bonus version. But what do I need to think about here, right? Number one, we need to make sure we maintain the connection. This is my non-leading uh, arm often, so I have to pay a little bit more attention to making sure that I manage the connection, follower as well. One. Two, I've prepped. Again, all the work is done. I'm not cranking this arm. What's going on here? Let's stop for a second and do what we call baby steps, right? She releases the turn. I follow this up and around. Then I'm gonna drop my elbow in so I can start to connect to my follower as we continue to rotate into closed position. Does that make sense? If we look at it from this side, we like to practice baby steps. We go up and around. I close my elbow so I can let go of this and it doesn't negatively affect her shoulder, and then off we go. So if we look at that from this side. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. And I can leave it in closed position, or I can let go and slide down. What are your thoughts from the follower's perspective, since that's kind of the weird one? Um, when you're going through this, we'll do baby steps. As you're going through and they put their elbow in the way, don't try to avoid it, they're, they're doing it for a reason. So make sure you're still giving a little bit of connection into that arm and then they'll know where you are. Good basic rule, we talk about connection forward and back all the time in West Coast Swing, it's dominant. We have an away connection, we have a forward connection, but we also have a rotational connection. If I'm sending Megan rotationally, she's gonna connect into whatever I put there. So in this case, I've sent her in this rotation she's gonna look for something to stop her, right? She's gonna keep looking for it, and then if I want it to slide down all the way to the hand, 
I'm going to let go of this and she's going to keep looking for it and she doesn't find it till there, right? So the principles are all the same. So let's take a look at that to music. All right, inside turn variation for West Coast Swing number five. We're going to use both hands. This becomes a cool shoulder break. It looks like this. One, two, three, and four, five, and six. If I did it from the other side, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So again, uh, things to think about. Well, let's first practice our baby steps, right? So in the baby steps, the left hand is the one that's doing the turning, just like a standard inside turn, right? Standard inside turn, left hand does the work. It still does the work. It's the first one to go. The right hand goes over the top to my bicep slash shoulder, depending upon how tall you are, and then I let go of that and break through. So if you look at that on the other side, again, I like this baby step drill. Left hand is leading the charge, but the right hand has to come up to get to the break position where I let go. Cool beans? So if we look at that, we'll do it a little bit slowly. We have a one, two, three, and four, five, and six, right? So I have to make sure that this hand is communicating the turn because this hand does all the work for leading the turn. Cool, the, my right hand is just the one that makes it look cool and lets us have option five. Oh, one, two, so the left hand initiates but the right hand goes down and out, breaks to my shoulder, anchor step. Let's look at it one more time before we try it to music. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Before we go to music, make sure to practice this one with your baby steps so you can sort out where the arms are going. Let's take a peek to music. All right, option six, still two hands. This time we're gonna crisscross them. So we're gonna go handshake, hold right to right, handshake, hold, uh, left to left, but the right to right is on the bottom. So offer the handshake to start, ask for this hand there. Cool. This one we call the bow tie. It looks like this. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Can you see why it looks like a bow tie? A little bit of the bow tie action. I'm from Kentucky, Kentucky Derby. Shout out to the bow tie. So two hands. We have a one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So this one my bottom hand is doing all the work. My bottom hand is the one that's leading the charge for the turn, right? The, my left hand or my top hand is the one that's just there to look cool and pretty. So if we're doing baby steps, I initiate the turn with the bottom hand, but my left hand has to beat it. It has to go up and over and beat me to the finish line. Then we go over my head. This left hand goes down and over Megan's head. Let's do that one more time. So. Right hand initiates it, left hand goes and beats it. Right hand goes over Megan's head, then mine. Left hand is gonna go up and over. Do you have any thoughts on that, Miss Megan? Let your arms move, don't fight them on up or down. Yep, and it's typically not gonna be moving in this plane. If you look at it kind of sideways, we'll kind of do this sideways, right? If we look at this sideways, there is a loop. See, you notice my left hand, there's a loop to it that's gonna continue out and in front of me. And sometimes when we do this to music, I don't get this there right on count four. I let it come over whenever the follower finishes the turn. Cool, so if we look at it from this side, we have one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So you can see the left hand kinda of comes over the end of four into the anchor step. We have one, two, three and four, left hand over. So don't rush that left hand leaders. Any final thoughts on the bow tie? I don't think so. That's it, let's watch it to music. All right, number seven is actually one of the easier ones. Uh, this is one of the first ones that I teach people. And so it's gonna be leaders right to followers left. This is a free spin, oh, one, two, three and four, five and six. If we do it on this side, oh, one, two, three and four, five and six. As just as an aside, this is one of the ones that I lead uh, a lot with newer dancers because the hands above the head really complicate things when the follower is new and turning. And this option allows the follower to focus on the turn without having to worry about 
any of the rest of the hands and her responsibilities, right? Mm -hmm. All the rules still apply. Again, we find that when beginners are doing this, we struggle because it's my non-dominant leading hand. This is the one I use all the time. This is the non-dominant one, and it's the follower's non-dominant following arm. So we have to work hard to stay connected. One, especially on count two. So Megan's rotating into that. I'm connecting here. There's connection rotationally in those fingers. All I have to do is retract the fingers, and off we go. Leaders, try not to start the lawnmower. Because Megan will spin. So, any thoughts for you, Miss Megan? Yes. Um, make sure that you don't do what I just did. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Make sure that you decelerate on count four so that you can have a nice chill anchor step. So the footwork is the same, the same, the same. So is the followers. Um, you have to master this footwork and leaders, you kind of have to master the positions mm -hmm. of the arms and understanding where the follower is going. Little caveat to that, as you get better as a leader, you become more of a follower. What I mean by that is you become more able to sense, you know, where your follower goes and instead of just doing your footwork like you're supposed to, you have to get good at adjusting and feeling that things are a little off track and working to make the adjustment for your follower in all these patterns. Cool? Let's take a peek at that one to music. All right, moving on number eight for our inside turns for West Coast Swing is a free spin from closed position. So previously we did it from my right to her left. Now we're gonna do it from closed position. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So in this one you can see everything's the same. The footwork's the same, but I have to use my right arm on Megan's back to communicate the turn. There's a couple different variations of this one. Maybe we'll show this one as well as a little bit of a bonus but the concept of the lead is the same and we're gonna do it from this side so now leaders i'm going to step back this hand as megan is is uh stepping towards me one as i prep her i have to chicken wing this arm for two because i need to allow her to be forward on her left foot can you do your footwork so they can kind of yes. see what's going to go on here so we have one two so you see as she gets forward on her left foot if i put myself right there right i almost have to chicken wing this arm before i can release for the turn, right? So uh, it's predicated on your connection. You get to talk yes. about that. So you want to stay back in this connection. Whenever there's a hand on your back, that is really where you want to connect to. And you're not going to be leaning on this arm, but you do want to make sure that you have contact with the arm so that if he does move in or out, you know where that's going. So it's a cool tip. If you are a ballroom dancer, you've probably been taught um, and very well to hold this arm up yourself and the leader fills up that space. It keeps the follower from being heavy on this arm. But what we find in social dancing is it's actually a little advantageous for Megan to create a little contact there. Now notice, I'm not holding her arm up, right? So don't be heavy on that arm. But what it does is, especially in the modern day of West Coast Swing, it allows us to follow shapes, and in this case, the rotation a little bit more easily. It also gives me leaders something else to work off of as I lead the turn. Mm -hmm. So my hand on her back and her connection back into that is the key, but I also have, if you can see, I've got something to push off of, a little extra information for the free spin, right? So this is the first version of number eight of your inside turns for West Coast Swing. The second one is I can actually take this up and over. Oh, one, two, three, and four, five, and six. So this is tracking out to be more than nine variations. This is quite a few. They're endless. But key for this, if I've got that connection on the arm, I can take this up and over. So let's talk about two quick things, one for me, one for Megan. First, let's practice our baby steps. So leaders, I'm gonna tuck this in to initiate the turn and I'm gonna go up and over. I'm gonna just follow over her head and reconnect. Now the follower does have to do something and Megan does a really cool thing with her hand that she's gonna explain. All right, so after they tuck and start to go over, as soon as this starts to go over my head, I actually go underneath so I can protect my space and get his hand nicely on the end. So Megan's creating her own little frame. I'm not pushing against it, but we are maintaining contact through this turn. And what it does is it gives me a hand 
and a connection to be able to continue to lead other things that I want. So let's look at inside turn variation for West Coast Swing, number eight to music. All right, number nine of your inside turn variations for West Coast Swing is just a standard basic inside turn, but we're gonna leave this in closed position, right? So earlier in the video, I explained that the footwork is the same for all these, but the leader might have to make some adjustments depending upon the spacing of the follower. So if I'm dancing a basic inside turn variation, and I'm gonna, the very first one we did, and I'm gonna land at this distance, right? My footwork is my basic footwork, and I land at this distance. But if I needed to land in closed position, I would have needed to adjust a little closer on count four to land in that closed position. So if we look at it from this side, with the adjustment, the closed position version, one, two, three, and four, I have to step in. I feel like I'm following Megan, anchor step. Cool? That's what's going on with the footwork. Second thing that's gonna go on if we use the baby steps, right? So I'm leading the turn, inside turns cutting through. At the point that I can see her spine, I wanna put my fingers in the middle of her spine. As she continues to rotate, and I'm gonna kinda of rotate with you, I'm gonna end up on this side of her back. I do not wanna be all the way across her back. If, there was a, if you could see her spine right here, I'm on this side of it, right? So that's what I'm looking at. I'm gonna see if you can see over my shoulder here. Inside turn, the second I see my fingers, that's gonna go there, and what's that tell the follower? To uh, lift the arm. Lift the arm, so explain that for us. So as soon as you feel hand, like a hand on your back, you have a relative idea of where this arm is. So you're just going to sneak your arm up and over just far enough to be on top. Cool, and there's two mistakes you can make, right? One of them, not so bad. One of them will cost me a tooth. The not so bad version is if you don't raise the arm, we just get crumpled. Yeah. We just get crumpled and it comfy. feels awkward, right? So if you raise the arm, good times, you go slightly up and over. And I always feel like sometimes Megan will, will kind of find my arm and work itself over. Yeah, it's like I'm swimming up and over. Cool. The terrible variation, this is one that again, I think newer West Coast Swing dancers will struggle with because they want to get this arm up and over and this happens. They just fire that thing up, right? So. It's counterintuitive to reach with your elbow, but this is much safer to reach with your elbow because I'm this far away from you already. Well, and the tip is reach very calmly and very small yep. over the arm. Don't reach yep. up, don't reach with your arm. And you'll see some advanced options where the followers work themselves up through that position, but let's keep it basic After for- After you know how to move your today. arm. Today, yep. So number nine is the inside turn to closed position. Let's take a peek at that to music. All right, gang, I hope you enjoyed the nine plus variations for your inside turn for West Coast Swing. Um, since this did include turns, we're gonna link up a, uh, a video that we did to assist the followers in turns. So followers, if you're struggling with the turns, we will link that up. And I also kinda wanna pre-announce the pattern tree chart. So what that is, it's, uh, it's gonna be launching here in a couple weeks. It's gonna be available to members of our website, paying members of our website. And what it is, is a pattern tree chart. We've taken all 400 or so of our patterns, all of the names, we've put them in a chart related back to the base pattern. So there's three basic patterns of West Coast Swing. There's pushes, right? There's pushes, sugar pushes, sugar tucks. There's passes of some sort, right? And then there's whip patterns. So those are the three official Megan doesn't like to be on that side. Basic Sorry. patterns, right? But then they branch out. We have variations and variations and variations. So even the most complicated pattern relates back to those. So we have created a pattern tree chart with all of the patterns on our website li listed and linked and charted all the way up to the base pattern. So if you guys are like engineer brain minded, I know a lot of the leaders are engineer brain minded, um, this is gonna be a really cool resource to help you understand how all these patterns fit together and relate. Um, so stay tuned. If you are not on our email list, go ahead and sign up for that. You can just go to westcoastswingonline.com, enter your email address on the first page, and we will make sure to send you some information when the pattern tree chart is ready. Do you have any thoughts on this is really your brainchild? 
Uh, it's just pretty awesome. So, I mean, I started doing this in the studio a long time ago where I would take pushes, passes, and whips and try to explain it to my students on how they needed to learn from the base patterns that we taught them. And so, kind of, this is how to do it. So, you will literally be able to have this document. You'll be able to find a pattern on the website and then you can follow the, the tree back from the document all the way back and find other patterns until you get all the way back to the base pattern and all of its variations and everything that's below it. It's going to be super cool. The first time it's ever been created in the history of West Coast Swing. So, Happy New Year, gang. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on a dance floor hopefully again soon.